The barber talks. Barbers usually talk a lot. They love to talk and talk non-stop. While plying their razor and scissors, they go on relating their tales in which the customer has little interest. The poor customer has to keep listening for fear of the sharp razor which is all the time so near his neck. A busy newspaper reporter couldn't find time to have a shave for many days. Then, one morning, he happened to pass by a barber shop and stepped in. There he found the chairs full of customers and had a mind to slip away. But the barber fixed his eyes upon him and said, You are next. The reporter sank into a hard chair, nailed to the wall. In a few moments, the customer in the chair got up and the reporter got that seat. Hackett? Shave. The barber enveloped the reporter in a large cloth and with a careless hand spread a great brushful sweetish lather across his mouth. Then he began to talk. Some people have their dead shaved before burying them. Once I was sent for to shave a dead man. It was at 706 Pearl Street. Barbers don't much like a job of that kind, although they get 5 to 10 dollars for this work. I started at about 9 at night and found the house quite easily. I had my razor, soap and mug in a little case which I use on such occasions. I knocked at the door and an old man opened the door. His eyes fell on my case. So, you have come, he said. Go upstairs. He is in the front room to your right. There's nobody with him. He hasn't any friends or relatives in this town. He rented the room only a week ago. How long is it since this happened? I asked. About an hour, said the old man. I was glad of that, because corpses always shave better before they get completely cold. I went into the room and turned up the lamp. The man was laid out on the bed. He was warm yet and had about a week's growth of beard on. I got to work and about an hour gave him a nice clean shave. With such nice shave, the man would have felt fresh if he had been alive. I put my things back into the case, went downstairs and saw the old man. He is fixed up, all right, I said. Who is to pay? He gave me thirty dollars for a money order to be sent to his brother yesterday, said the old man. I shall pay your fee out of it. How much? Five dollars, I said. The old man handed me a five dollar note and I went home very well satisfied. Next day, continued the barber, there was some news. I heard that a man had died at 706 Pearl Street and a little while before that, a man in the next house had taken poison. People in one house sent for a doctor and those in the other sent for a barber. The funny part is that the doctor and I both made a mistake. We got into the wrong house. He went in to see the dead man. The family doctor there was just getting ready to leave. Now this other doctor did not waste any time. He got out his stomach pump stuck it into the dead man's throat and started pumping the poison out. All this time, I was busy shaving the man who had taken poison in the other house. And look at the funniest part of it all this. After the other doctor had pumped all the family doctor's medicine out of the dead man, he opened his eyes, raised himself up in bed and asked for coffee. This made the family doctor mad. He got into a fight with the other doctor and both fell down the stairs. And how about your man who had taken the poison? Him? said the barber as he snapped off the cloth. He died, of course, but with one of the nicest shaves that ever a man had. As soon as the barber finished, the reporter made a rush and fled away. Call again! shouted the barber at his back.